I really want to lose five pounds. Have you ever felt the pressure to conform to a certain image to fit in? Or perhaps you've experienced the suffocating expectation to look a certain way? I can relate. Like many of you, I've personally gone through the extremes of weight management, from being underweight to overweight. But now I'm on a journey to find balance. Today I want to talk about polarized body standards. But first, hello internet friends, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's discussion on breaking free from extreme body conformity. Inspired by the iconic movie Mean Girls. Because there are two kinds of evil people in this world. Those who do evil stuff and those who see evil stuff being done and don't try and stop it. Society likes to bombard us with mixed messages. On one side, diet culture promotes thinness at all costs, pushing us towards an endless cycle of restrictive eating and extreme workouts, just so we don't have belly rolls while sitting. On the other hand, the fat acceptance movement discourages any talk of weight management, even for health reasons. And if you do, you're not only out of the click, but their new target. Just like the plastics in Mean Girls, these standards can make us feel inadequate and constantly judged. Social media exacerbates these pressures, presenting curated versions of reality that can leave us feeling insecure and unworthy. But it's important to remember, your worth is not measured by the size of your sweatpants. Mine are extra large. Diet culture is the societal obsession with thinness and the pursuit of weight loss at all costs. It promotes restrictive eating, extreme exercise regimens, and unrealistic body transformations. It promotes quick fixes, focuses on appearances over health, food restriction and rules, body shaming and stigmatization, product marketing fueled by weight loss products, and programs that profit off of individuals' insecurities about their bodies. It promotes unrealistic expectations about weight loss outcomes and perpetuates the belief that a certain body size will lead to happiness, success, and acceptance. And diet culture is reinforced by societal norms, media representation, and cultural attitudes that equate thinness with moral virtue, discipline, and attractiveness. Diet culture, like the plastics, represents an idealized, exclusive standard of beauty and behavior that is upheld through manipulation, exclusion, and sometimes cruelty, creating a toxic environment where individuals feel pressure to conform to certain standards, whether it's physical appearance or behavior, no matter the cost to their health. Did you have an awesome time? Did you drink awesome shooters and listen to awesome music and then just sit around and soak up each other's awesomeness? You know what? You're the one who made me like this so you could use me for your eighth grade revenge. God, see, at least me and Regina George know we're mean. You try to act like you're so innocent. You think that everybody is in love with you when actually everybody hates you. Janice Ian initially positions herself as an outsider, opposing the plastics and their toxic culture. Similarly, the fat acceptance community emerged in response to societal beauty standards and discrimination based on body size. However, just as Janice Ian's character becomes more complex over time, toxic behaviors within the fat acceptance movement have evolved, cloaked under the guise of body positivity. Despite her initial opposition to the plastics, Janice manipulates Caddy it's pronounced like Katie, into infiltrating their group to serve her own need for revenge. Likewise, within toxic fat acceptance circles, some individuals exploit the sense of community to elevate themselves while disregarding the needs and experiences of others. They may use their platform to assert their dominance or superiority over those who don't conform to their narrow definition of body positivity. So many body positive, body positive advocates. Thereby perpetuating the exclusionary attitudes 
the movement initially sought to fight against. The toxic fat community downplays and denies the health risks associated with obesity. Doctors, I say, oh, I don't want to be weighed today. If I don't want to talk about my fatness at the doctor, I say, oh, I'm not here to talk about my weight. Additional weight loss is not really good for many people. The pursuing weight loss is more about pursuing thin privilege than it is about pursuing health. Dismissing concerns and conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and certain cancers. This denial can discourage individuals from seeking necessary medical care or making healthy lifestyle changes. They promote unhealthy behaviors, glorifying overconsumption, and dismissing the importance of a balanced, nutritious diet and exercise. They also practice exclusionary attitudes, shaming individuals who may not be perceived as loving their body the right way. Additionally, there is a severe lack of intersectionality. As the movement often fails to address the unique circumstances and experiences and challenges faced by individuals from marginalized communities, this perpetuates systematic inequalities and excludes voices critical to the movement's original goals. Navigating the complexities of diet culture and the promotion of obesity is challenging enough. But we also face battles within our own inner mean girl. Caddy perfectly embodies this struggle. It's Katie. C-A-D-Y. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Caddy. As she strives to fit in, she begins to criticize herself based on other standards of beauty and behavior. She internalizes toxic ideals, doubts her actions and motives, and becomes obsessed with meeting others' expectations. In this process, she loses herself and ultimately transforms into the villain she once opposed. Negative self-talk is just like carrying around your own personal burn book, where the target is always you. It involves criticizing, catastrophizing, and comparing, all of which lead to feelings of inadequacy. It is relentless, and it is constantly finding faults within yourself. It catastrophizes the potential consequences of any situation, heightening anxiety and stress. It keeps you comparing yourself to others while dismissing your accomplishments and positive experiences, focusing solely on the negative. Moreover, this self-depreciating behavior reinforces a negative self-image through harsh labels and disparaging thoughts about yourself and others, perpetuating the vicious cycle. Calling somebody else fat won't make you any skinnier, Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. By refusing to participate in self-criticism and instead embracing kindness, both towards ourself and others, we can break free from the toxic patterns that keep us from truly appreciating who we are. How to break free. Know thy enemy. Learn to recognize the manipulative tactics of social media. If you find yourself conforming to a rigid set of rules or standards, chances are you're being manipulated. Awareness of these pressures can help you make choices that genuinely benefit your health and well-being, rather than simply adhering to societal expectations. Reject harmful extremes. Focus on balance over extreme behaviors. Nourish your body without swinging to extremes of overconsumption or excessive restriction. Eat with your body's nutritional needs and energy balance in mind. Cultivate self-compassion. Engage in positive self-talk. Replace critical or dismissive thoughts with kindness and understanding, much like you would a good friend. Surround yourself with positivity. Choose social media threads and friends that promote a balanced and healthy view towards body image and eating. Spend some time off social media. Take a walk, clear your head, spend some time with your loved ones. I guarantee time away will put things back into perspective. Seek support. Don't hesitate to reach out to a trusted friend, a loved family member, or a mental health professional for support and guidance in challenging negative self-talk patterns and negative influences. Just as Caddy found redemption by apologizing to those she hurt, our weight loss journey often requires us to make amends with ourselves. 
It's about forgiving our past mistakes and embracing the journey ahead. And remember, everyone deserves a piece of that tiara. So here's some for you. And you. And you. She doesn't even go here. Oh no, not for you. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon. Bye.